Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Kupfer. I'm the president of Conserve America. We are delighted today to be joined by Representative Buddy Carter. He's in his fifth term as a representative from Georgia, where he run where he represents the first district, which runs up the coast of of Georgia. He's been a lifelong resident of that district. He's been a mayor, a state representative, and now he's a member of the of the U.S. Congress. And beginning in this Congress, he's also been the co-chair of the Roosevelt Conservation Caucus, which is a bicameral group of members who are committed to finding conservative and pragmatic solutions to our country's energy, environmental, and conservation challenges. And we at Conserve America work closely with the members of that caucus and with the caucus itself. Last year, uh, Representative Carter received our Congressional Leadership Award for all the great work that he's been doing uh, over the years. And since he received that award, he's actually continued to do even more on the leadership front. Um, a few weeks ago, he was named as the committee chair of the Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on the Environment, Manufacturing, and Critical Minerals. And so we thought we'd start by, first of all, congratulating the representative on, the, on, on, on achieving that, that chair role, and then also talking a little bit about what the priorities are uh, for that subcommittee as we go into this congressional year. So enough of me, Congressman, I'll turn it over to you to uh, take it from here. Well, Jeff, thank you very much, and thank Conserve America for the great work that y'all do, and I mean that sincerely. As you mentioned, um, I have the honor and privilege of representing the entire coast of Georgia, over 100 miles of pristine coastline. It is my home. It's where I've lived all my life, where I intend to live the rest of my life, and it means a lot to me, and um, some of my fondest memories are going fishing with my dad, and I, I want my children and my grandchildren to have those same memories and have those same opportunities, and you know, I get frustrated quite often whenever I hear that um, Republicans aren't conservatives and uh, are conservationists, I should say. Um, uh, to the contrary, I believe we are. Um, you know, uh, and a lot of people have questioned, well, you're a pharmacist. Why does this mean so much to you? Well, it means so much to me because of what I just said. Um, I represent the entire coast of Georgia. And yeah, we're up here as representatives of our districts. And therefore, it should reflect um, what's important in our district. And Conservation is important in my district, and that's why I, I have such an interest in it um, outside of my own just personal interests. But um, it's it's been quite um, quite um, a, um, a ride, if you will, that um, coming to this uh, chairmanship of the Environment and Manufacturing and and Critical Materials Subcommittee. I'm honored to to take that position. Bill Johnson did a great job and. These are big shoes to fill, and I appreciate Kathy McMorris Rogers and and her confidence in appointing me to that position. But um, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to make sure that um, we beat China. China is the OPEC of critical minerals right now. We all understand that. And if we learned anything during the COVID experience and the pandemic, it's that we can't rely on our adversaries for critical um, and for the supply chain and chain and 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 critical supplies. Um, We've, we've got to have allies and we've got to be able to do that ourselves. And that's one of the things that I want us to be able to do. Another thing that's very important to our subcommittee, I believe, is going to be permitting. You know, I had the opportunity last year to go to Houston, I believe it was three times. And every time I went and met with those energy companies, it was the same thing over and over again. Permitting, regulations are crushing us. And no matter what sector, of our economy you talk to, whether it be energy, whether it be health care or, or whatever, everyone agrees. Permitting. Permitting is crushing us right now. And we've got to do something about the permitting process. All of us want to make sure that 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 we're being responsible, but this is just we've reached a tipping point and we we're 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 overdoing it with the permitting to the point where it's just crushing us. So that'll be something that's very important to us as well. Um, you you know, we want to unleash um, American energy, and, and that's very important. I subscribe, as I think a number of Republicans do, to an all-of-the-above type energy strategy. You know, I get frustrated whenever I hear people say that um, we haven't done enough to decrease carbon emissions and pollution here in America. 
The United States of America has decreased carbon emissions more in the last 10 years than the next 12 countries combined while still growing our economy. So we can do it and we have done it. In fact, I'm I'm often critical of the of the fossil fuel industry and in that I don't think they've done a good enough job of telling the story of how they decreased emissions. And and you know, so often many people want to demonize fossil fuels. Well, we all know that in in a practical sense, yes, we want to get to no emissions and to zero emissions. But it's going to be a while before we do that. And and fossil fuels are going to have to help bridge that gap there. And, and they will. And again, through innovation and through the research and development that they've done in that industry, they've decreased emissions and, and will continue to do that. So, you know, we've got a lot ahead of us in, in the Environmental Subcommittee, and I'm excited about it. Well, you certainly uh, cer certainly a lot on your plate. I know you've you've hit the ground running with a with a hearing last week on uh, cybersecurity issues in 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 the water system, and I'm sure that will be something as you as you look at infrastructure as well that that you're going to deal with. Can I ask you a little bit on just unpacking a little bit about what you mean about beating China as a practical matter and what that how you look at that from a from a policy standpoint. Uh, that what should the U.S. be doing uh, in order to accomplish that? Well, we know that we're losing that battle. We know that China, uh, and, and let's face it, China doesn't have anywhere near the the environmental policies that we have here in America. We we get it and we understand that. And we're not suggesting that we not have uh, permitting and, and not have um, regulations. Of course, we should have that. But there are two things that We've got to do better. We've got, first of all, we've got to mine for critical minerals. We have critical minerals here in America, but we, we're not mining for them. We've got to be able to do that. Secondly is the processing. We, we you know, and, and I get it. I know what China's doing over there. They just, they they do processing. And, and once they've contaminated a site, they just close it up and move somewhere else. Well, we're not going to do that, but we can do processing here in America. And we need to be doing processing. but we we don't need to be reliant on them. Um, right now, we are reliant on them. I mentioned that they are the OPEC of critical minerals. You know, my district is one of the few districts that actually mines for critical minerals, and we're doing that. And if you look at the state of Georgia, the state of Georgia has consistently been, I believe for the last 11 years, the number one state in which to do business. And one of the reasons for that is because we have, we've acknowledged that we've got to to adhere to some of these policies, but at the same time, we've got to be business friendly. And we are business friendly in Georgia. We need to be business friendly in the United States as well. You know, you talk about the all of the above uh, approach to energy, which we certainly conserve America support and uh, and and have have been troubled by by the pause in in LNG exports that's uh, that that is on the table in in the in the Biden administration. And the other, piece that um, that you recognize, and I think it's important to continue to remind everybody, is the link between revenues that come from federal um, production of oil and gas and conservation. Uh, last year, you and I uh, co-authored an op-ed which talked about the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which distributes millions of dollars throughout the country, places in your district and others, and that mm -hmm. support conservation projects. And the funds for that come from royalties and revenues from from uh, activity uh, drilling in, in in federal lands and in federal water. So I think that's always important, and I know it's something you care about. It is something I care about, and it's something that all of us should care about. We we need that those um, those funds. Let's face it, you know, environmental protection and economic growth are are not mutually exclusive. We need to understand that. And it, and it is important that the the land and water conservation fund continue. That depends on, of course, a lot of of drilling, a lot of of mining, and and the offshore leases that have not been approved by the Department of Interior. There was a there, there was to be a five year offshore leasing program that was when it's not approved when it's not extended, then we lose those funds. And when we lose those funds, we lose valuable assets for conservation. 
And that's one thing that we have to keep in mind how important it is that we have those funds available. You know, another aspect of conservation, which I know you've also been focused on, is the uh, Endangered Species Act. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're at the 50th anniversary of that. Um, question wh whether it's accomplished all of its, all of its goals. Do you have some thoughts about where we are with ESA or what we could be doing about it? Well, let's not forget that, um, that ESA started with, um, uh, with the Republican president, and, and, and that's important to note. You know, the program really hasn't worked as well as I think it should and, and could work. Um, there have only been a handful of instances where we've had some of the um, wildlife that have been listed on the Endangered Species Act to, to come off of it. And, you know, and some of those were simply errors that they should have never been on there in the first place. But overall, I'm disappointed that the program hasn't worked better than it has. And it needs to be looked at again. It needs to be updated and, and probably needs to be tweaked. Um, it, it should never, you know, it, it, it should never be really in, inhibiting us. In, instead, we should be we should be working to it, obviously, you know, we want to make sure that that all these species exist and, and continue to thrive. But we got to do it in such a way and it can be done in such a way that it doesn't destroy our economy. Right. OK, well, we'll be looking forward to your ideas on 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 that. And I know that's something that will evolve throughout throughout this year as people begin to to look at the ESA. And you've certainly given it a, a lot of thought. You know, our tagline at, at uh, Conserve America is conservation is conservative, which is something you mentioned before. So as we as we wrap this up, at least for this uh, installment, I'll just ask you again um, to talk a little bit about why you think conservation is something that conservatives should support and conservatives should 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 rally around. Well, let's not forget who who was known as the conservation president, Teddy Roosevelt. And and you know, Teddy Roosevelt who set all the who established all the national forests, the national parks. Um so you know this originated as a as a Republican effort, if you will. And it continues as that. Um you know, we we got to get past this in our country of um, of painting with such a broad brush that we're saying, oh, this group is this, that group is that. And that's not true at all. Republicans are conservationists. We do love our environment. I mean, you know, you talk about hunting, and fishing, and I mean, then you're talking about conservatives and you're talking about Republicans and, and conservationists. So it, it is something that I think that... Um, that that we are 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 doing better at messaging in the Republican Party and 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 doing better as, as conservationists to make sure that um, that we understand that we can be conservationists and still grow our economy. That those two do go together. Okay. Well, Congressman, we really appreciate your time today. We'll be looking forward to. Uh, your chair of the committee and all the things that you're going to do. And we look forward to be, being back in touch with you as the year goes on to get some updates and have further discussions on these really important issues. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Thanks.